Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. I want to tackle the question, how often do I water my garden? And I want to start with some common sense. Number one, there's no recipe that tells you how often to water a garden. This is a mature garden. It's towards the end of July, so we're going to be really focusing on mature plants when temperatures are in the 90s, even hitting triple digits. Once you get into triple digits, it's a whole different beast, but the principles are the same. So I wanted to cut in and say this early in the video before you watch it. If you're looking for, you know, flat out recipe, so to speak, on how to water, it's just not going to happen. Watering depends on so much. It depends on where your garden's located, how much rain you get per week. When it does rain, how many inches of rain are you getting? It depends on your soil, how well it drains, compost, elevation, different crops you're growing, size of the plants. There's just so many factors that come into play that nobody can tell you water once a week, water twice a week. And then when it comes to saying how much water, this video is going to explain to you what a good soaking is and just really how to take care of your plants so that they thrive. The only way that you can learn, I think, is kind of watching this video, practicing in your garden, and get a sense of how much water your plants are going to need when they get to different sizes and when the season progresses from April, May, June, July into the heat. There's just too much variation to say water a tomato plant two times a week. So. This is my main garden. It took me an hour and 40 minutes to water it by hand. I'm gonna show you how to do that now for an hour and 40 minutes. We're gonna go over to a smaller garden and I'll explain the principles. These are mature plants. Mature butternut squash over there, acorn squash. They require a lot of water. Sunflowers, mature. Cucumber plants right in there, maturing. I'm gonna really focus on tomato plants. A lot of people love growing tomato plants. Look how nice and green everything is over here. It's really well watered. We'll cover that. So here is a smaller tomato plant and this is basically how it works. Let's just say April, May, early June when your plants were about the size of that small tomato plant, knee high or lower, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, maybe you're watering two times a week. The soaking process is going to be the same. That's really what's most important is to really water the plants the correct way. When temperatures start getting into the 80s, maybe you're watering three times a week. When these plants that are, you know, nice and small like this are now getting up to waist high, you're going to have to start watering more often, maybe three times a week. When we're into the 90s and the tomatoes are almost as tall as me, almost six foot tall, you're definitely going to have to be watering every other day. But just notice how green these are. The biggest struggle I think people have is maintaining the right amount of water. You can give them a little bit of water per week or, you know, maybe a good amount of water per week. They're going to survive. They're not going to thrive. They're going to hang on. You want your garden to thrive. So they need a lot of water. Most struggling plants aren't struggling because we don't have enough nutri nutrients in there, enough fertilizer in there. It's because we're just not watering the correct way. Notice the darkness of the leaves. When you're not watering well, the bottom leaves are going to start to turn yellow. The plant's going to be stressed. Disease will attack much more easily. You may have somewhat damp soil, but if it's not enough water through all the surface roots, everything in between, not a nice depth watering right around the base, the plant's not going to be able to easily or as easily pull the nutrients and the plant's going to struggle. So we're going to be hitting it with like more fertilizer and stuff like that and maybe what your plant needs is more watering. So let's go over to my smaller garden. We'll talk about the watering principles. This is my smaller garden. I haven't watered it yet. You have plants that are, you know, knee high. Squash of course may not get past knee high, but it's going to get big. So you get the idea. That's, you know, working its way to a medium sized squash plant, cucumber plants. They may not need water every other day, but it would also help them if you do that. You can't and this is what I want to stress. You can't really overwater and kill plants in garden beds like this, raised beds or earth beds. Yes, some plants don't like to be wet 24 seven, and I'm not saying watering every day, but it's a small fraction of plants. And you'll be able to tell if you're watering too much, 
You know you have water in there, you know you have nutrients in there, and maybe the leaves are starting to turn yellow. Cut back on the watering. More damage is done by underwatering. And again, there's no you know, book that I can give you or anything I can write to tell you how to do everything. The tomato plants in here, fully mature and massive. Look at the beauties down there too. This is from my series, Growing for a Family of Four. I have to restake that one because it's getting so heavy. All right, watering. This is all about principles, so you're going to have to adapt them for your temperature, plant size, all that kind of stuff. So this is an eggplant, you know, maybe past my knees, pretty good size, growing pretty well, 90 degree temperatures. So we're going to do a base watering, and I know it's a little bit boring, but this is how long I water in the base. That's about 10 seconds. That's a lot of water to really surround the plant, drip down, down to sometimes right the main sort of, it's not really a tap root, but the deep roots go. Now, I only have one plant in this space, but sometimes I will put another plant there, another plant there. You really want to water in the surface root area too. So maybe not as long, but something like that to make sure you're giving the entire root system water. The plant this size, something like that. Surface roots are really important. They really cover the top four to six inches of growth in the soil. When that sun is beating down, the temperature of the soil can get up to 90, 100 degrees or even hotter. That will damage the leaves. It also can send messages for the plant to slow down. Watering really makes a difference. Of course on here, an inch of mulch would make a difference. Mulching really does help. When you come over to a squash or zucchini plant about this size. Again, you know, I'm not going to cut this. I wanted to show you the amount of time spent watering. This is the base. And you're really putting in a lot of water. With the temperatures at 95 degrees, maybe the plants the size that I just showed you, we're doing this every other day maybe every third day, um, well, what would that be? So one day in between or two days in between of the watering. They don't need as much. Cucumber plant, it would be the same amount right in there, but because these guys are sharing the surface area, I really want to soak in nicely the space in between these plants. The surface roots are going to go everywhere that the hose is going, so you really want to Soak the area over here too. If this plant was twice as big, they would get more water out here. And then sometimes I go back, you know, and just hit the main area again. You can't really overwater your plants on these hot days. Coming into here, if you want to subscribe and follow, I mean, right after this, either tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about watering container plants. The plants in here. These guys look a little stressed to me. They're not as green as you want them to be. They haven't been watered in a while. These are beans. Now these are getting to maturity and they're going to be starting to produce. So while these plants won't get three, four, five, six feet tall, you have to keep them watered. And notice the amount of time again. It's really a nice deep soaking of all the bean plants. Pole beans, same thing would be right in there. I'm gonna show you the tomato plant. Well, let's do the pepper plants. The pepper plants, probably three feet tall. Now, they generally don't get as many surface roots spread as tomato plants, but again, the base. And this is a four by four raised bed, so I don't really have to get in between these pepper plants because the water is going everywhere. But you get the idea. The length of time might be a little bit longer than you think. So pepper plants this size, they're producing the heats. Going to be like upper 90s today, maybe break 100 tomorrow. These are going to be watered every other day. And I'm just going to finish out the peppers in real time. Just to show you how much water is needed. and one more to go. 
We're going to go water the tomato plants in my garden, in the main garden, so I can talk a little bit more about different principles. But you get a good sense that this is a lot of water going in here. Drip irrigation is different. You have to make sure your drip irrigation is getting down to depth and they're all going to vary. So if you have drip going regularly, you might only be watering sometimes only the top two inches when this heat is coming because that water is evaporating quicker than you can. Maybe you have it set well, it's getting down to four, six, eight inches, but you have to know the drip watering system. All right, let's go to the main garden. These are second waves of eggplant, another wave of zucchini back there. You can see how big this plant is. So if it was early in this, earlier in the season, temperatures are in the upper 70s, lower 80s, I would water something like this. And maybe two or three times a week. And that's gonna work when the plants are smaller like this and the temperatures are cooler. Same thing with the zucchini back there. They're gonna get thinned down to one plant. At this point, your squash zucchini are starting to send those shallow roots all over the place. A nice deep watering like that, that's perfect. Now, when the temperatures start getting into the upper 80s, 90s, these plants are full size, maybe they're up to here. You're gonna be wanting, wanting to water every other day. And then you're also gonna be wanting to water in between where the shallow roots definitely have kind of, well, well, the roots of the plants have spread out to all the spaces in your garden, and you're going to want to soak it in like that. These are the first tomatoes that I planted. They're six feet tall. They're producing. I've been harvesting them. This is a four by four raised bed. The amount of time is similar, but these are full-size plants, and you would do that full 10 or 15 seconds right in there. This is just to get that base well watered. I mean, it's a good amount of water. And then I kind of break things down into quadrants. So you have that space right there. That's one. Let's get that in frame. Two, three, four, five, six. And each quadrant would be watered like that. You really want to get that water into all the root systems, especially right kind of in the middle there. This right here, making sure that you water well away from the base of the plant, probably I think is what keeps my tomatoes, my tomatoes and my garden thriving. You're gonna hear, I think it's sort of a myth, one inch of water a week is all your plants need. That's all they need to survive but you really want to have a thriving producing garden. And you can go with one inch a week, but I guarantee 99 out of 100, there's always that one gardener that's got it working perfectly. And a lot of times that's because the temperatures are different. But 99 times out of 100, one inch of water a week in midsummer is not enough for your plants and they're gonna suffer. All right, let's go over to some large butternut squash. Let's make a quick stop at the little cucumber. That's going to be thinned down to two plants. And for this case, you're just wetting down the area. It's establishing the shallow roots. Things are spreading out. But that's enough water. You know, temperature's been 90s for this guy. Fully mature, massive butternut squash. You're going to see all kinds of squash in there. This is in probably a, maybe a four three and a half by six, eight feet, foot bed. But just look at all the growth. Super green, super lush. I'm letting it grow out there as an experiment. In order for this plant to survive, it's getting all of its moisture from here. With the high temperatures, this guy is just drinking up the water and, you know, water is passing out of the leaves to the earth. Well, to the atmosphere. We want to soak this in. This plant probably could use water just about every day when the temperatures are in the 90s. Um, this was watered yesterday, so I don't mind giving this more. You, I'm going to actually remove a lot of the leaves down there, but you'd have one section right there, and I would let this go. Well, I'll just show you how long. I mean, it's going to be a good 20 seconds, um, and I hope 
you know, those of you that continue to watch, you're watching because you really want to learn about watering. And I think the best way is to really show examples. You would think that's enough if I didn't water yesterday. Um, I mean, since I watered yesterday, that's a nice addition, you know. But if I didn't water yesterday and it's been a full 24 hours, 36 hours of no water, you need to really water this butternut squash even more. And this is just one section. You know, and I would still go for maybe another 10 seconds. Your mature plants need massive amounts of water. And then I would do the same thing right in the center. That's where the main um, plant was planted. Well, where the plant was planted. Sometimes the vines that are all over here will root out depending on the variety of uh, squash or vine that you're growing. But you get the idea. A lot of water would go all the way down to keep this plant man maintained. Okay, let's go over to the tomatoes. We'll finish up there. There's a little guy for the series I'm doing on actually just growing in a nice little mound. This was planted late by seed, but this plant is going to be huge in a couple of weeks. Something that size, you can see there's some grass mulch down. That makes a huge difference in slowing the evaporation of the water. That's pretty good for that tomato plant. So the larger ones are right in here. These are in three foot by six foot framed beds. You know, they're not quite high enough for raised beds, but I put all the good resources in there. I've been putting in plenty of mulch and you can see that they're, you know, good size, nice and green, lots of tomatoes coming in. And I would start right over here and we would go all the way over. We want to really soak in there for a good 10 seconds again. And a lot of people ask, well, why don't you just use a sprinkler system? Sprinkler systems are fine. I have a tower sprinkler for when I need it. And you're going to see how long I'm talking, how much water I'm putting into this space. Except they're not really efficient. They lay out a lot of water over an hour period, but you're not getting the deep soaking that you're getting here. The water's just not going to rush down to the depth that you can get by doing it by hand like this. So you have the sprinkler going, so then I'll move over to here, to this area. I also have a massive sunflower sucking up water in here. So when you're using a sprinkler, it's putting out a lot of water across a wide space, but it's also evaporating very quickly. So you're just not going to get the deep soaking that you're going to get here at the base of the plant or, you know, in other parts of the plant. Plus you're watering the entire garden. You're watering in places um, where you have weeds and I like them, you know, not to get that extra water and it really helps me have to weed and manage the weeds less often. I even have a bean plant right back there. A bean plant right back there. So you get the idea of really kind of moving across, getting that 10, 15 seconds in. And again, this soaking really makes a difference. When you're using that sprinkler, the sprinkler will water really the top two inches well, but then you stop and then that's going to evaporate. By watering this way and watering more frequently, the water down at depth is staying down there and the top's not drying and then wicking all that water up because you're adding more water on top. By keeping everything consistently moist regularly, your plants are going to thrive. All right, let's go over to the cucumber plants, the larger ones over here. These are my cool crops. These are seedlings under shade cloth. Shade cloth can make a big difference. These were watered yesterday and it's still moist up top because of the shade cloth. It's nice and cool. The other time you have to water more often is when you have seedlings and it would be something, you know, like this. You're really trying to put in enough water. You don't have to go down with the deep soaking because the roots just really aren't quite there yet. But because they're still establishing, and they can dry out quickly. Like if I didn't have shade cloth here, um, I actually couldn't be growing these cool crops. But if the sun dries at top one to two inches really quickly, when you have seedlings, the plants are going to suffer. So you really want to soak them something like this and keep that top two, three inches nice and moist. Now, you don't have to do this as frequently you know, if it's April and you're starting cool crops, you have to start increasing it more regularly come May, more often in June. 
definitely often in July if you're starting cucumbers and squash plants, but you get the idea. Watering varies greatly. These are pretty large cucumber plants. They're producing, there's actually a couple cucumbers down there. You can see the main vine starts right there. This again is probably actually three feet wide, maybe five feet long. And we would go the whole 10, 15 seconds right in here, 10, 15 seconds right in here, a little bit longer in there, really soak this whole space in. You can see the cucumbers are right down there. They're nice and healthy. They're not misshapen. When you're not watering your cucumber plants regularly, and just like this, I mean, look at all the water that's going in there. There is a chance that the infrequent waterings or the inconsistent waterings or just not enough rain and everything will make your cucumbers bitter. That's not the absolute reason. Everybody has a theory behind it. But I can tell you by watering my cucumber plants like this, Every other day when the heat is into the 95 degrees, the plants are this size, I get really consistent cucumbers that aren't, um, that aren't bitter. Watering really makes a big difference. So here's my entire garden. Again, this took an hour and 45 minutes. It is a bit of work, but the watering makes a difference. If you want to, what I would recommend, maybe you're like, this guy is crazy. I mean, that is just too much watering. And I understand that. And most gardens aren't this big. So that first one is smaller. And that takes maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Water some of your plants more often with the uh, principles that I showed you today. And I think you will really be surprised by how well those plants end up doing. So here's just real quick. This is my first cucumber plant. Consistent watering is helping keep this alive. Nice cucumbers coming in, a little bit of a deformity there. That's usually caused by uh, poor pollination. This plant does not have a vine borer. That's my squash plant. Soaked yesterday, it's still struggling, so something's going on. The pounding heat of July and August can really crush your garden. So experiment. Try some of the principles that I showed you today. See how that group of tomatoes compares to maybe how you currently water. And that's really the best way to learn. That's the only way actually to learn about watering is to change up the frequency, vary how you do it, and just see what your garden needs. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And watering more often creates a garden that thrives and produces better. It's not just about surviving on an inch of water a week and staying alive. Thanks for watching.